Good morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning. We receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. Uh, if you have an announcement, she'd ask you to take it out today for a couple of brief announcements. As you're so doing, also the blue book at the end of the pew, if you can fill it out and pass it on down. Uh, today, following the service, we have a pastor appreciation potluck that will begin right after the service today in the fellowship hall. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, the youth are invited to go to St. Mark's. We have our annual diaper war. Um, as I mentioned before, don't be alarmed. The diapers are empty, but yet we do still throw them at each other. That will be at 3 o'clock today, and that's uh, an annual event with St. Mark's Lutheran Church. And so that's all open to all youth, uh, junior high and high school as well. Monday, invite the church out to go to the Starving Rooster for a meal. All the proceeds for that meal will go to help support the youth to their Higher Things Conference. Uh, so it's a wonderful time to get some food and fellowship with the rest of the church family and so forth. That'll be on Monday. Also, the very back of the sanctuary, there are baby bottles. Uh, make note of that. You can grab the baby bottles uh, to be filled for Dakota Hope. And we'll be getting those back to turn those in as a way of uh, funding and helping support the women's clinic here in town. I was also asked to mention two other things. There are some orange poles outside. We want to make sure to leave those. Those are marking the... Uh, curb and uh, so forth for snow removal. Uh, I hate to say snow, but uh, that prevents when we do the um, movement of the snow that we're not taking up chunks of the curb and so forth, so forth. So those are out there for that reason. Also, finally, but not least, the voters packets are out for the voters meeting next Sunday. And so those are in the sanctuary. So make sure to grab those <clears throat> in preparation for the meeting. There's a bunch of other information in the back. I want to commend that to you as well. Is there anything else that I may have missed or overlooked this time that needs to be mentioned? Well, this morning we are Divine Service Setting 3. We're the 19th week after Trinity. We encounter some wonderful texts, but more specifically the text from Ephesians where Paul talks, you know, talks about taking off a garment, a dirty garment, and putting a new garment on. What does he mean by that? How do we understand that? But before we jump into the service here this morning, our opening hymn is going to be sung by our choir. So at this time, we'll ask the choir to share with us the music. Ask the congregation to please stand as we turn to the top of page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by the virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the sin, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro, it printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. The Lord saved him out of all his troubles. This is God, our God, forever and ever. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from my bold. And know that our fathers have told us.
us pray. Almighty and merciful God, of your bountiful goodness, keep us from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish whatever you would have us to do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 19th Sunday after Trinity is from Genesis chapter 28. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to the heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, Let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and he went home. When the crowds saw it, they were afraid. And they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. This is the gospel of the Lord. With one heart and one voice, we confess the holy faith as expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, 
light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 708.
In the name of Jesus. Amen. Perhaps one of the biggest misunderstandings in the Christian faith, even among us LCMS Lutherans, is the belief that our old sinful nature, yes, our old sinful nature, is transformed and changed to a good nature when we become a Christian. In other words, it is often believed that when a godless pagan is converted, that their sinful nature is changed into a pious nature. Ta-da, brand new, right? From this to this. For example, I can recall a certain individual from childhood who was known as the town wild man. Yes, the town wild man. Let's just, for the sake of conversation, call him Jason. Every weekend, the town would hear how Jason would smash it at the bar on the weekend, sleep with a bunch of women, and then speed around the countryside. That is to say, until that one day when he found God, or we could just say it this way, that God found him. And then with a snap of a finger, things changed in Jason's life. He quit drinking, he quit cussing, and he quit his womanizing. He settled down, as they say. He got married. He had some kids. He became very quiet and tender and very, well, kind and quiet. The town marveled at his change. Jason went from a wild man to a docile man in months. Here's the catch. And here's the catch that we must note today. His old Adam, that corrupt, sinful old nature, did not change into a good nature. That is to say, when Jason became a Christian, his old Adam did not change into a new man. The old Adam, it still existed beneath Jason's quiet, kind, and tender disposition. Jason still had the same lusts, the same desires as he did before. All the traits of the old Adam's behavior, the putrid, crumbling, and inflated like rotting, wasteful old Adam was still present with Jason. So that brings the question, that begs the question, why did it appear that Jason no longer had that wild old Adam? The answer is that Jason, he continually put off the old Adam. Instead of letting that old Adam have full reign in his life, he actually battled against the old Adam. He fought against the old Adam. He put the old Adam off. Now, baptized saints, all of us here today in this sanctuary, we have all renounced the devil. We have indeed all renounced the devil. We did this In our confirmation right. Or when you join this church. You renounce the devil with all of his works and all of his ways. Furthermore, we renounce the world and all of its trickery. However, the point remains, we must also renounce. We must also renounce the old Adam. All of the dark works and the perverted ways of the sinful nature. You see, the sinful nature, which we call the old Adam is actually a dirty garment. It is found in every single person in this sanctuary. That includes you and me, every single one of you, and myself as well. We all have this old Adam, this sinful nature, this old garment, this old dirty garment. Now, if you think, on a side note, if you think that you do not possess the old Adam, if you think that you are free from sin, the Bible actually has something to say to you, and it tells you that you are a fool, that you're fooling yourselves. A claim like this is, well, nonsense. And so the point is, each of us has this filthy garment, this old Adam that continually leads, it leads us to perform evil. The simple words that rise to the tip of our tongue, the evil thoughts that pop up in our heart, and the desires that emerge in our mind, all of this is due to the old garment, the old Adam. Constantly, every single day, every single day for you and for me, this old Adam will work to corrupt us, indeed, and corrupt our neighbor. Which is why the Apostle Paul tells us in our reading from Ephesians this morning, he says this to us. He says, put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Indeed, put it off. In other words, Paul is telling you and me to daily take this rotten and dirty garment off. But how are we to take it off? 
How are we to take this old garment off? You see, dear friends, putting off this old Adam, this sinful nature, it's actually violent. It's painful. And frankly, not much fun. In fact, the Apostle Paul calls it a crucifixion in Romans chapter 6. But again, how do we practically take this old garment off? In a word, repentance. Yes, repentance. You see, it's like this. We come to the Lord's church often to confess that we are poor, miserable sinners in thought, word, and deed. We did that at the beginning of the service. I stood right here on the bottom of the floor here, actually at the front of the floor as the chief of sinners of this church. And together, shoulder to shoulder, we confess that we're poor, miserable sinners in thought, word, and deed. And when we do this, it's like we're taking that old garment off and we're dragging that old sinful Adam right before the throne of God's grace, right there, And indeed, as we confess our sins, we're essentially throwing ourselves upon the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then right here in this sanctuary, at this time, the Lord does not pour out wrath upon you and me, but grace, forgiveness, and salvation through his word of absolution, through the mouth of a pastor. This is why Martin Luther said that the life of a Christian is a life of repentance daily. In other words, the posture of the Christian is daily repenting of sin, daily taking this filthy garment off through the confession of sins. But again, this is hard. It's painful. It is hard and painful because we don't like to admit when we're wrong. We don't like to admit when we are, well, in error. We don't like to apologize. We don't like to confess our sins before each other, and especially before God. We don't like to admit that we often wear this dirty garment of the old Adam, that we often are comfortable in this old, dirty garment. Regardless, the fact still remains. The old Adam is constantly working to corrupt you as a Christian and us as a church. And so this life as a Christian is a constant conflict. It is a constant battle between the old Adam, this sinful nature, and your new nature in Christ. You can say that the greatest cross and the greatest suffering that you will have in this life is not with the devil, even though that is indeed a struggle. And it's not with the world. Indeed, though the world is difficult to struggle against, but the biggest struggle is right here, our sinful nature. Get this, the biggest problem in Matt Richard's life, it's my old Adam. It's right here. The biggest problem in your life It's your old Adam. It's right there. This is the fight that we will endure in this veil of tears until we part. But you may say to yourself, aren't we supposed to get better and better? We've heard that before. At least it's been taught in the American church that we as Christians, the older we get, the more mature we get, the better we get. Haven't we been taught, indeed, that a mature Christian supposedly sins less and does more good than mature Christians? Well, they seem to have things whipped into shape. They've done away with the dirty garment and only wear a new garment. Aren't we taught in American Christianity that as we mature, we become more and more independent and powerful and we have sin more under our control? There's a theologian who talks a lot about this. I found him to be most helpful. He comments on the subject and he says this. In this Christian faith, We move away from pride in ourselves and our own achievements to a gradual awareness of our spiritual failure and Christ's work for us as we entrust ourselves to him. We move away from the conviction that we are self-sufficient to the repeated experience of spiritual bankruptcy. We move on from the delusion of our own spiritual importance to a growing sense of our utter and total insignificance and the glory of God. We move on from delight in our own power to the painful recognition of our spiritual weakness. We're brought from our self-righteousness to the increasing consciousness that we are sinful. Indeed, that we are sinful. In other words, as we mature spiritually as Christians, we realize how much we wear the filthy garment There's an awareness of understanding just how oftentimes we have this old garment on. And as we realize how much we tend to put on this old garment, 
and get comfortable in this old garment, we find ourselves not repenting less as we mature, but repenting more. And so, dear friends, mark this. The older that you get and the more mature that you become in this Christian faith, the more that you will understand the tactics of the old Adam, which results in you repenting not less, but more and more, and then finding your refuge in Christ. Keep in mind that the Apostle Paul does not say to you and me in our reading from Ephesians, he does not say, you know, dear Christians, the more you mature, the more you won't have to worry about the filthy old garment. You don't have to sweat it the more mature you get. He also does not say, dear Christians, take off your old self, that old garment, and then get busy trying to be good little pious people by following a small-minded list of rules. Now he says this, take off the old self and clothe yourselves with the new self. In other words, repent of sin and its deceit. Repent of sin and its deceit and return back. Return return back to your baptisms. Return back to your baptisms where you belong. In other words, remember where you belong, who you belong to. Rest in Christ's grace. Receive his gifts. Trust the gospel. Sit at his table. Depend upon his word. Have a clean conscience of forgiveness of sins. Put on Christ and do not give an inch. Do not give an inch to that old Adam. But you belong not to the old Adam itself, but you belong to Jesus. You belong to light, not darkness. Baptized saints, you already have the righteous garments of Christ. They were given to you in baptism. And so the fight is not to somehow obtain a new garment, but instead the continual fight, the continual battle, is to take off the filthy garment in repentance. That is the battle of the Christian faith. That is what the word of God calls for this day. Because you do not belong to the devil, you do not belong to the world, and you especially do not belong to the old Adam. But instead, that old Adam is drowned in baptism, and you belong to Jesus. You belong to the Christ. You're clothed in his righteousness. Indeed, his righteousness. That is yours as a gift. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As the congregation, please stand for the offertory. Congregation may be seated for the offering music. As a way of reminder, the offering plate is at the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can be mailed in the church office or conducted through the church website online.
Ask the congregation to please stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Create in us clean hearts, O God, by the forgiveness of your Son, that we may put off the old ways of sin and walk in the ways of the commandments. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you bestow healing on our bodies above all to show your power to forgive sins. Grant healing, we pray, to Brian and Kari and Carl, Charlotte, Cindy, Connie, Deb, Dennis, Fern, Gail, Hayden, Isaac, Jason, Jeff, Jerry, Joellen, Callie, Kim, Marvin, Megan, Mark, Marilyn, Marley, Miles, Pastor Jinx, Philip, Randy, Roger, Ruth, Sharon, Shirley, Tom, and Travis. Strengthen their faith in your sure word of absolution, Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, God of all concord, it is your gracious will that your children on earth live together in harmony and peace. Defeat the plans of all those who would stir up violence and strife. Destroy the weapons of those who delight in war and bloodshed. And according to your will, end all conflict in the world. Teach us to examine our hearts that we may recognize our own inclination towards envy and malice, hatred and enmity. Help us by your word and the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and to root out the evil that would lead us to strife and war, so that in our lives we may be at peace with all people. Fill us with zeal for your work of your church and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which alone can bring peace, which is beyond all understanding. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. As we continue to the service of the sacrament on 194, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, or one of our sister denominations, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel at the rail, and cross your arms to receive a blessing this morning. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... by the Lord and trusting in his promises we're bold to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Our Lord.
Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
ask the congregation to please stand for the Nunc Dimittis. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Maybe see if it's departing him, hymn number 685.
I was told to mention to you that uh, following this service, we're going to be going directly into the fellowship hall for those of you who are staying for the potluck. And then we'll have in our, our, our meal prayer in the fellowship hall instead of doing it typically in here. So with that in mind, as we consider today's theme and we, th- we consider the epistle lesson from Paul, we're to put off the old self because, well, we have the new self in Christ. We have the garments of Christ which were wrapped in. You have the righteousness of Jesus. And so we cast off the old. We have Christ. You are in Christ forever, evermore. Amen.